Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so it's month roundup time. Um, this one's going to be a little bit different to the normal monthly roundups. Obviously, it is slotting in between two videos, uh, one of which has gone up, the other of which will be up the week after this one. Um, and the thing with both of those is they cover all the major events of June. Um, so, <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a weird monthly roundup for this one because, like I said, all the events that I would want to really cover were covered. Video that went up last week, which is um, the death of my gerbils, and the one that's up next week, which I won't spoil for anybody. Um, if you want to know what the other major event of June was, then you're going to have to watch that video. Although I know one of the people watching this right now will have a very good idea of what that other video is going to be about because they they are part of the other major event for this month. So <clears throat> yeah. Um so like I said I'm gonna have to do this monthly roundup a little bit differently to how I would normally because I'm not really going to be talking about anything that's kind of happened this month. Um rounding up anything that sort of happened to me this month because I covered the major events um, but I will say this was not the June I thought I would have um, so at the very beginning of the month um, well actually just before the beginning of the month so the very end of last month um, I made a decision that uh, Pride Month, so I was going to very much focus on my two definite LGBTQ plus books. Um, I know I use um, LGBTQ plus characters in a lot of my writing and all of my books are LGBTQ plus friendly in um, one way or another, even if they don't necessarily feature uh, prominent characters who are. Um, or they don't like overly acknowledge um, that the characters are. Um, all my books are, you know, it's just how I like to write. Um, I'm a very inclusive writer, or at least I try to be a very inclusive writer. So, made a decision to make both of my, um, so both the colours I see and no doors allowed, so that we are clear about the two books I'm talking about. Um, I decided to make the 99p for the month. Um, that, you know, I was going to focus this month very much on promoting those two books as much as possible, um, doing as much as possible, sort of, you know, basically make it a good Pride Month. Um, I might have done other things. I, like, at the beginning of the month, I had, like, no idea how the month was going to go. <clears throat> so I hadn't really made any plans or anything that would happen I was just like you know what it's it's pride month I'm going to not take advantage of the fact that it was pride month but celebrate the fact that it was pride month in whatever way that I could um, even though Plymouth pride isn't until August I think it's August um, I was still sort of in that sort of frame of mind um, at, the, at the end of last month and I was sort of like starting to make plans for what I could be doing um, and thinking about the things that I could be doing and then obviously just before uh, just before June hit um, you got sick and you technically got sick at the end of May um, but she was start no she was sick on the 1st of June <laughs> so it was the last day of May that I had my injection um, yeah, so literally, first day of June, I wake up, one of my gerbils is sick, um, and then she started getting over that, and then 
Chalabi Wen and all of those plans I, I'd kind of had for June very much went out the window. Um, very quickly went out of the window. Um, I mean, I did mean, uh, make no doors allowed in the cars I see, um, 99 pence <laughs> or 99 cents. And this is being done um, on June 25th. So they are still technically um, that price, uh, but by the time this one goes up, they'll be back to their, to their normal price again, because um, this is going up at the beginning of, of next month, which is why it's being filmed now. Um, so yeah, all of my, all of the plans that I'd had for June, um, obviously sort of right after uh, Celebi's death, I didn't, I didn't really feel like doing much um, in, in, in that sort of vein. Um, I sort of just reached the point where I was starting to tweet a little bit more again and sort of get back into the swing of doing things and, and sort of like I was basically considering okay let's let's see what I can do for the second half of the month to you know at least have a little bit of a of, of pride um, celebratory whatever um going on and then obviously I lost me um so yeah the it's definitely not the month I thought I was going to have in any way shape or form um if you told me at the end of last month um at the month that I was at that point in time looking forward to getting into and looking forward to seeing what I could do to uh, to to celebrate my differences and to try and promote myself a bit more as an LGBTQ plus writer. Um, I would not have believed you, um, but it is what it is. Um, this month has, has gone the way that it has gone and some of those things, there's not a whole lot I can do. Um, as much as I might wish I could do so much. Um, it is what it is. It, what's happened has, has happened. And it's one of those things that's going to resonate with me for a, for a long time, probably. Um, and it's... Yeah, it's it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because in a lot of ways, um in in a lot of ways, you know, this this time next year it's it's gonna have that sort of very sad feeling for me. Um and Pride Month is usually June, so I'm now going to sort of associate the two things. Um but hopefully I, I will kind of reach a point where I can sort of, you know, celebrate the, the differences that I have and, and the differences that so many beautiful people in this world have. So that's, that's the kind of person I am. I like celebrating differences. I like celebrating people's individuality and, and people's uniqueness. And the fact that instead of doing that this month, um, I instead had to deal with a lot of difficult emotions and, and, and loss um, and I know I know there are only tiny little things but they were my tiny little things <laughs> um, they very much saved me when I when I got them I, it was um, just over a year on from the end of my previous relationship, it was just over a year on from the loss of Honey Sky, who was my, my rabbit. Um, and I'd sort of, I'd been sort of chugging along and then I kind of had just reached this point where I will legitimately say that I was depressed. I was crying almost every evening after I got home from work. Um, I was feeling incredibly low. I was just not in a very good headspace and the thought of 
of having something to look after again really helped um and then actually getting them helped so much so to say that losing them was a bit of a blow is a bit of an understatement um so yeah it's yeah, it's just been one of those kinds of months um that one very major positive thing did happen um, but that's that's for the next video, um, so I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna say anything more about that. Um, what I have done, so um, I have cleaned out the, the cage and their play area. Um, the play area I had to sort of rebuild again, <laughs> so I've actually spent most of today cleaning off all the the tacky tape. Um, residue and I've reassembled it now so it's it's all looking reassembled um, and good um, I think sort of this time last week um, I'd very much sort of thought to myself um, I probably wouldn't have any more gerbils um, and, it, and then this sort of train of thinking was I think more I didn't want to get new companion at that point if I could if I could find a way of um, keeping her stable without one um, partly because I didn't want to be in the situation of constantly having to introduce new gerbils to each other because that can be very stressful especially for older gerbils anyway um, I was very much aware that you know it could have been what finished her off um, she I mean I think I could have also sensed that she was near the end um, she, there, there were definite signs that she was slowing down a little bit um, so I think I, I could sense that she was sort of near the end and there was no point putting her through any extra stress um, I really wouldn't want to do that <laughs> really wouldn't have wanted to do that um, so I, this time last week I was definitely in the mindset of no, I won't get any more gerbils, um, I'll probably sell on the cage and the play area and all the toys, anything that was left over um, after me passed. Um, and then I had those last two days with me. And I know I'm not ready yet. I recognise that at this point in time, it's too soon, but I know I will have gerbils again. So, reassembling the play area today, as sad as it is to see it empty, um, also feels very optimistic and very hopeful for the future. Um, at this sort of moment in time, um, my thoughts on when it will happen because I feel it will happen probably before the end of next month <laughs> um, is that uh, definitely not looking until I have news Ashes back um, which will probably be the beginning of next week and then I've got family visiting the week after and just so that I've got a little bit more freedom of moving around because settling new pets in. Um, so that, that those first couple of weeks after you get new small pets are critical. Not just in terms of <clears throat> not just in terms of you bonding with the new pet, but in terms of because they've had this sudden disruption, it can cause things to happen. Um, you're not sort of keeping an eye on them um yeah they they can go um just from the stress of being introduced into a new environment um so th those first couple of weeks are sort of very crucial when when you have a, a new small animal um and i don't want to be spending the you know the first week of of having new little fur babies not with them um so the rational part of my mind is very much thinking okay not looking for at least two weeks um that should give me enough time to sort of 
figure out ex at exactly what point I will genuinely be ready. Um, I might feel like I need more time at that point. I might feel no, I'm absolutely ready at this point. Um, but at least have given me a decent amount of time to stop and reflect and think and grieve and not be doing anything on gut reaction or on impulse. Um, because there's nothing worse that you can do when you're grieving than to try and rush the process. Um, I have, though, got several names um, in mind for um, my new gerbils, <laughs> which I'm trying to see as being a positive um, sign. That although, yeah, it's very painful to to have lost them and I'm probably still going to be sad about that even when I get the new pets um but the fact that I'm in some ways looking forward to meeting some new little critters and figuring them out and them figuring me out um I'm hoping is a good sign that this is the right choice for me. Um, as I said, if you'd asked me this time last week, I'd have been like, no, um, I don't think I would have more gerbils. Um, obviously, they have very short lifespans, and you know, it, it is putting yourself through a lot. Uh, in, you know, I mean, three years feels like a long time. I feel like I had them like three and a half years, <laughs> but yeah. Just over three years, however long it was that they were in my life, felt like a long time. So there is that. <laughs> I mean, we went through a lot together, so um, I don't feel like it's too brief a period of time to, to work investing emotions into or, or anything like that. Um, this time last week, um, I, I was very much of the mindset of, no, I, I've done gerbils, I you know, want to see what other kind of pets um, are out there that you know, might suit me. Um, maybe I'll get that cat that I've always wanted. But when it sort of comes down to it, and as I said, very much that last couple of days, and I'm going to say maybe last three or four days um, that I spent with me, where she was showing me a lot of affection, she was showing me a lot of, um, basically showing me how much I meant to her. Um, I think that very much changed my mind um, and very much solidified the idea that, you know what, I want more gerbils. Um, I, you know, that, that cat idea that I had floating around in my head for a long time. Um, cats are very expensive. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, and the, there's no guarantee, I mean, there's no guarantee with any animal that you're going to bond with them as much as you'd like to bond with them. Um, the, it, it's very much a case of I just, I don't know, I just feel like there was something about having gerbils that suited me, that suited my lifestyle, that, you know, they were, they were very responsive to me, they were a joy to watch playing, um, they were, you know, they were a constant source of, of light in my life. Um, if the abundance of videos and pictures that I took of them is anything to go by. <laughs> I mean, the two of them had made it up onto my wall um, whilst they were alive. Um, which is something Honey Sky never managed. <laughs> and I love that rabbit. Um, so I just think there's just something about gerbils. Um, I mean, it might just have been there was something about those two gerbils. Um, but I've, I've taken some time, I've looked at some pictures of gerbils, of other gerbils that are not my gerbils, um, and it just gives me a different feeling to any other pet or any other animal. 
Um, and I, I, as I said, at this point, it still might be the grief talking, which is why definitely giving myself that two week period of really getting my head around what's happened is probably a really good idea. Um, even if I'm sort of also in the frame of mind of I really want my journals now, <laughs> I know I'm not ready for it and I I try to live my life in a non-impulsive way. Um, I try to make sure that I research things, I try to make sure that I really think about what it is that I want. Um, it's one of the reasons why it takes me so long to get a tattoo. Um, because, you know, I, I like to be sure that I'm making the right decision for me before I make a decision. Um, so, yeah, um, there is a good chance I will have more gerbils before the end of next month. However, if it takes me longer, it takes me longer. That's just the way it will go. And I'm not going to worry about it too much one way or the other because this is a process. And being impulsive during the process is not a good thing. So I will absolutely make sure that I give myself the time I need to really make a proper decision about what it is that I want and what it is that I need um, going forward. And if that means that in three weeks from now, I have some new fur babies, that means in three weeks from now, I have some new fur babies. Um, if it means it takes me longer to reach that point it takes me longer to reach that point if actually in the end i do end up selling um the cage and the play area because i've decided no you know what that cat that i've been wanting is <laughs> probably what i want <laughs> and the thing is i don't even really want the cat I, I don't think i want a cat as much as i think i want a cat i think it's more a case of i feel an association with cats and I've always felt an association with cats. But I don't really think I want a cat as a pet. I like other people's cats. And even even then, I don't always like other people's cats. I, I always get really scared of being scratched. Um, so I think I like the idea of having a cat more than I actually want a cat. Um, whereas I know the reality of gerbils. Um, and I know exactly how hard they can bite when they whether they mean to or not, um, most of the time they don't hurt, <laughs> um, but um, there, there were a couple of, of bites from Mew in her last uh, day, and I, I know she didn't mean to bite the way she bit, she was just very confused, I think she was trying to groom me, and just didn't know what she was doing, um, and I say that because I moved my hand away and she moved towards it, which is a sign that she wasn't trying to be aggressive. And it's just, yeah. Um, but apart from that, you know, they, they never bit me that hard. Um, rarely bit me that hard. <laughs> I think there was only ever one or two times where they ever bit me hard enough to draw blood. Um, but I know, I know, and I, I know how much I can love small animals. Um, so, you know, because I've, I've had hamsters, I've had rabbits, I've had gerbils, I know that my ability to bond with small animals is fairly solid and fairly good. Um, and it, there's just something about it that appeals to me. Um, I'm sure one day when I have a big house rather than a little flat, I will probably have a whole menagerie of animals, big and small. Um, but at this moment in time, the way I'm feeling is I'm probably going to have more travels before the end of next month. <laughs> and I will probably, yeah. Anyway, so this uh, roundup of June got a little bit sidetracked um, into sort of, I don't know even what it got sidetracked into really. Um, I hope you found this one sort of interesting. I'm hoping you're looking forward to finding out what the other big event of June was next week. Um, and I will see you next time.
See ya. <laughs> if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to check out some of my others. And if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. See ya.